and now we're talking to Ann Fleming for uh, WomenDrivers.com. How are you, Ann? Hey, I'm great, Javier. Thanks for having me on your program. Thank you very much. And uh, we just saw your release of a 2014 report on car buying habits for women. So, um, and, and very interesting because always uh, we always hear that women are the, 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 the persons who really decide who, what cars to buy in the, in the family, right? Well, absolutely. And, and if we just look at the car buying power of women, I mean, last year, according to two reports, Women purchased 20, over 27 million cars, 27 million cars at car dealerships alone. And if you look at that, that is 20, that's over 75,000 units a day. So there's an awful lot of women out there in the United States buying, buying cars. So she's got an awful lot of purchasing power and car dealerships are paying attention. Yeah, and in, not only paying attention in terms of what products are they going to present to women, but also how they treat women at the dealership, right? Because that has been an issue uh, at, at some point. Well, you know what, it's all about the treatment of women, and you know, it, it, it's, it's really a new day, um, and, and that's what our car buying report is, is certainly all about. Um, you know, in the past, uh, women have certainly felt underserved, you know, by, by car dealerships and by the industry. But the report and what we're showing is that on the whole, women are having very, very positive experiences. What we measure on our website is WSI, Women Satisfaction Index. And um, women are having very, very positive experiences uh, through and through when shopping, when buying, and when servicing her car at car dealerships in the United States. So what are the, the top, let's say, top five brands that a, a woman are feeling more comfortable with, both the product, the service, and all the other related uh, issues uh, with their cars? Well, uh, you know, surprisingly, certainly the luxury brands are, are, are performing very, very well. But when we look at buying, some of the top brands would be Dodge, Mitsubishi, Jeep, Chrysler, Lexus. I mean, so, some of the top brands are, are showing that it's not just the luxury um, uh, brands that are performing very, very well. Uh, some of the core brands, when women go into a dealership, uh, she's having extraordinary experience at, at, at some of these, at, at some of the, you know, brands, and they're not just the luxury brands, which bodes very, very favorably. Because the other, the, the other thing that we showcase, and, and, and that women should tell us, is that when she goes into a dealership, uh, women typically go into two dealerships before she buys her car. If she leaves a vehicle and she doesn't buy, three quarters of the time, she will not return to that dealership. Huh. So it's really important that dealers get it right the first time. And some of those brands that I just mentioned are doing a really great job to get it right the first time. Yeah. And uh, another interesting uh, finding in your report is that a uh, woman... Uh, go to the dealerships by themselves uh, only like 45%, and why, why is that? Well, I think it shows that uh, women are more comfortable going to the dealership by themselves. Um, you know, it used to be that many women went to the dealership with, with someone else, but, you know, today four in ten women are going to the dealerships by themselves, meaning that six in ten are still taking someone with them when they go to buy a car. So when they actually go to buy a car, uh, uh, six out of ten women are still bringing someone with them uh, when they're going to negotiate a car. They still want someone with them either, you know, to make sure or just for for, to have uh, to make sure that uh, you know that they're negotiating, uh, uh, you know, the, the the deal correctly, and and maybe just for, for you know to, for comfort for comfort purposes. Yeah, and uh, the other part of the the, the equation here with uh, dealing with the dealerships is like that top reasons for women don't go back to the depart service department and not satisfied with the last visit, didn't like how they were treated, inability to get their issue resolved, and the cost of the service. I mean, these are pretty strong uh, reasons uh, for uh, for not doing uh, business with the dealerships, right? I don't think that's surprising at all. I don't think that's surprising. I mean, if women, uh, the top three reasons are basically all about she's not satisfied uh, with some level of service. 
So um, dealers, it's really imperative that they have a strong person with very excellent listening skills at in a service lane. Uh, that's really where retention is imperative uh, for dealerships is in a service lane. And um, if there's something that goes awry, whether she's not satisfied with 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 with, uh, with the issue getting resolved, she will not go back to that dealership. She'll go to another dealership, or she'll end up on the air going to Pepperwoods or Sears or you know to to another retailer. So it's very important for dealerships to get somebody and that that service advisor really has to listen not just to what she says. But what she's not saying, because if something goes awry and she leaves and she's not happy, she will not return. Very, very interesting. And Fleming for WomanDrivers.com. Thank you very much for your time. And we're going to post a report. Uh, obviously, the website is uh, open to the public, right? That's where they can visit and, and find more information about your uh, your your tips and uh, everything for women. Absolutely, and the website is really open for women to write reviews about their experience and uh, at car dealers. And, uh, you know, it's an opportunity for car dealers to showcase that they're women friendly. Excellent. Thank you very much, Anna. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.